The theme is preaching should have main motivation from God's grace and reminders from the law. That uh, the preaching in the preaching, the mo motivation of the people should mainly come from God's grace. God cares about you. God has a wonderful plan in your life. God wants to do great things in your life. So when you love Him and trust Him and obey Him and serve Him, God is very, very happy with you. And then there should be a reminder from the law, uh, but it should not be the main thrust to talk about the reminders from the law. But there should be a reminder from the law, yes, there are consequences when people disobey God. So people should understand that. Okay, and um, we have just talked about this outline. I'm going to use another example. And this outline is all practical. Now, in the last session, we talked about loving, uh, love people as God has loved us. And then we talked about how uh, the negative examples talk about Christians who don't love other people. And then Christians who do, do love other people. So to, to let people know that not all Christians love other people. And then God's nature and grace. He's full of love and uh, He you know, He gives us the ability to love. He changes our nature so that we, we can love. So this is God's nature. God is very God is very beautiful and in heaven is full of love. And on earth, if Christians learn to love uh, if Christians learn to love other people, then the church and the place where the Christians are become like heaven. So it's very important that we learn to love uh, like uh, because Jesus has that nature and he has that grace to help us all the way. He helps us by first loving us. He first loves us. He changes our life. He uh, works in our hearts so that we are changed. We, uh, he, and then he appreciates everything we do for him when we love other people. Uh, he works in our hearts so that we have a nature of the love. And then for people who, are, uh, who don't have much love, God changes our hearts so that we learn to start to learn to love. And He gives us good examples from other people uh, that other people would, um, their examples will, en will encourage us to love other people. Okay? And then why some people don't love other people? So that people will wake up and say, okay, these are the reasons. And then reminders and warnings, when people don't love other people, what will happen? Uh, it can first, you know, cause damage to the church, and also um, it would, uh, you know, ruin the reputation of the church and the Christians. And um, also, it can ruin the Christian's life when they don't love other people. And then how? How can we have love? How we, first we see God has poured so much love in our hearts, so we want to respond to Him. And God will for sure reward us when we love other people. And how we can change our hardened hearts, a selfish heart, to change it so that we can love other people. So every point is related to changing people so that they will love other people. So that's the point. Every section of the message is geared toward changing people's lives so that they will learn to love other people. Okay? Now, if I change it to another, another theme, for instance, to forgive other people, that we should forgive other people. And then examples, that there are Christians who um, don't forgive other people. They don't, you know, they, um, they, they know that they should forgive other people, but they, they hold grudges against people. And even some Christians would, would uh, say things against other Christians because they cannot forgive them. They would gossip about them. They would uh, uh, attack them. So that's what some Christians do. And I've met Christians like that. And it really hurts me. And I learned to, I have to learn to turn off what they did to me. And then there are Christians who forgive. Uh, there are Christians who forgive and really uh, make other Christians feel very comforted when they are forgiven without condition, 
forgiven totally. Okay, and then God's nature and grace. God's nature, He is a forgiving God. He totally accepts human nature. He knows that human have a sinful nature. He knows that. He understands that and he accepts that. That's why whenever any Christians, when any person comes to God and asks for forgiveness, God gladly forgives them. God is very happy to forgive them. God is very happy that any Christian realize their sins and confess the sin. God uh, has that nature of forgiveness and he, he, is, he willingly forgives us. When we confess our sins, he, and then He changes our heart. He changes our heart. Uh, he gives us a forgiving heart. Uh, I have experienced this myself, that when I became a, uh, before I became a Christian, I have uh, strong dislike and even hatred toward one of my family members because uh, she really hurt me greatly and um, and I had that hatred toward her but then after I became a Christian God's Word changes me and I want to bless that person I want to uh, forgive that person and I s said nice thing to her and after today I'm I'm doing nice things to her all the time and she and she said many times that I've been nice to her, even though uh, she was not nice to me when I was young. And so God's grace changes my heart. He changed my heart. It's very important that we talk about how God changes our heart so that we pick up this nature of God, so that we learn to forgive. And then God also uses the Holy Spirit to rebuke us when we don't forgive people. When we don't forgive people, we we feel guilty, we feel unhappy inside because the Holy Spirit would point out our sins and then we feel guilty. And then it would pursue us. This uneasy feeling will pursue our heart until we are willing to forgive the person. So we, in our heart, we, uh, you know, at first we do not want to forgive, but then the Holy Spirit keep working in our heart so that we know that it is wrong and then we start to change. We start to change. We start to forgive. And, and then God will reward us by joy and freedom. When we can forgive people, God can give us freedom. So that's God's nature and grace. And there are so many Christians that used to be hating other people, but God changed them. And sometimes they don't change immediately. Sometimes they Okay, they forgive one time, the next time they cannot forgive. But God is patient. He continues to work in our hearts until we can, we can forgive people. And then when we forgive people, God will reward us. So we can talk about how we have experienced, excuse me, how we have experienced um, God's forgiveness, how He forgives us, how He changes our life, uh, how His forgiveness take away our burdens, take away our guilt feeling, and then He changes our life so that we start to forgive people. Uh, and then when we forgive people, we experience the freedom of God. And God is patient to forgive us, to uh, uh, help us to forgive other people. So when we talk about God's nature and grace like this, people will, s will s see that Wow, God is so good. God keep working in my life. God has done so many good things in my life so that I will change. God is so patient and kind and good. So I, I really appreciate God. So when people really appreciate God, then it will change people. When we see that if God is not a forgiving God, we all will end up going to hell. But God is a forgiving God. He forgives so many millions, millions, trillions of our sins. Every day we have many sins. We have many, many failures. We have many bad thoughts. Then God still continues to forgive us. And so when we think about, wow, God is so good. 
and He has changed my heart so that I start to forgive. And then we are met Christians who can forgive us. So we are motivated to forgive other people. So it's very important that we learn to understand what God has done in order to change us, you know, to forgive us, to accept us, and then in order to change us so that we can forgive other people. And, and then when we forgive, then God will reward us with more blessings, more freedom, more joy, and ability to serve God. If we cannot forgive people, we cannot serve God well. Okay, and then why people cannot forgive? Okay, now when you give the, uh, the name of the section, uh, you say like why some Christians cannot forgive other people. And then God's nature and grace related to forgiveness. Okay, and then uh, negative and positive examples of Christians related to forgiveness. And why? Why some Christians uh, don't forgive other people? Because the world is full of unforgiveness. So Christians sometimes pick it up from other people in the world and they learn uh, not to forgive people. They, they, you know, they also sometimes see bad examples from other Christians. Some Christians don't forgive other people and they see that other Christian doesn't forgive other people so I don't have to forgive other people too. And sometimes even pastors they hold grudges against people who are not nice to them. That there are some members in the church that are not nice to the pastor and the pastor hold grudges against those people and other people see that and then they learn from the pastor not to forgive. So these are some reasons and also the reason is because when we have sin, when we don't have a close relationship with God, then we won't have the strength to forgive. Okay, and reminder and warning. And the Bible does say very clearly, Jesus said very clearly, if you don't forgive your brother's sins, neither will the Father in heaven forgive you. So when we cannot forgive other people, God will not forgive us too. And then if God doesn't forgive us, we can end up in hell. That is terrible. And then how? How can we have forgiveness? So w when you write how, you say how we can have forgiveness. Well, very often you can say, first we can think about how God has forgiven us. Our so many sins, we deserve to go to hell, but God has forgiven us so many times that we have offended people and we have not forgiven people and still, God still continues working in our heart to change our heart. So we see Wow, God is so good. So we say, Lord, please help me. Please strengthen me. So then we see God's goodness and then we ask for strength. We have a close relationship with God. We worship God, Lord, and pray for the person whom we find it hard to forgive. We say, Lord, please help me to forgive this person. This person is, you know, he has hurt me so many times. But if I don't forgive him, you would not be delighted in me and you will withhold your blessings from me and you won't forgive me either. So please Lord help me to forgive this person, to accept this person so we have a close relationship with God to receive strength. And then we have compassion on this person. The person cannot forgive other people because he has been hurt by many people in the past. So he had only learned, he has only learned to, to uh, hate people to dislike people. It's hard for him to forgive. So he doesn't have this nature of forgiveness. So it's hard for him to change. Then we want to have compassion on them because he is so miserable because of his unforgiveness. He, he is away from the grace of God. He is suffering. So we have compassion on them. Hopefully our compassion and our love for them, our care for them, our acceptance of them will change the heart so that they will start to change. So we treat them nicely even though they don't treat us nicely. So we try to forgive them uh, because we think, realize that they are miserable. So we pray for them. We start to pray for these people and pray for strength to forgive them. And then we, we choose to forgive them and choose to bless them and choose to say things to them and choose to give gifts to them to show that we forgive them. 
and, and do nice things to them. So these are some possible action. Now, how you can, you know, you can think about how uh, it's best from your own experience that you have learned how to do something, okay? So the whole thing is related to forgiveness. Interpretation of passage that, that, the Bible, uh, that Jesus said, when you forgive other people's sin, the Father will also forgive you. So that's that when we forgive, then God is very happy with us and He will forgive us. That, and also that means we understand God's forgiveness. So when we understand God's forgiveness, He will also forgive us. And then when we don't forgive people, God will say, I have forgiven you so many sins and you still don't forgive other people. Then God will not forgive us and it can cause, our, uh, cause people to have eternal damnation. And then negative example and positive example would be people who don't forgive and people who forgive. And then God's nature and grace, that God is full of mercy and compassion. He's full of forgiveness. He is willing to forgive. Now, but He cannot just forgive anyone uh, by, you know, saying, I forgive you. He, the person must receive the free gift of Jesus Christ because God is also just. When there is a sin, there must be a penalty. And the penalty of sin is uh, eternal damnation. And the only way the person can be forgiven, because by God's justice, is that this person has taken the forgiveness of Jesus Christ, the, how Jesus forgives him. And then he accepts his forgiveness, and then God will forgive him. And then God will uh, give him eternal life. So that's God's nature. He's just, he, he has forgiveness, he he has the heart to forgive. He gives us, uh, He can give us, a, He changes our heart so that we can forgive people. And then God's grace that God has forgiven so many times, even though we disobey Him. And God can change our heart so that we start to forgive people, so that we start to have compassion on people. God changed our heart so that we willingly forgive other people. And then when we come close to Him, when we worship Him and love Him, very often, the forgiveness of God will flow in our heart. The joy of the Lord, the peace of the Lord, the love of the Lord will flow in our heart so that we'll have forgiveness of other people. And then when we forgive other people, God will bless us. God will give us peace and joy and strength and reward. So these are God's grace to motivate us to forgive other people. So there are all kinds of reasons to, that we should uh, forgive people because God's grace is so great. He has forgiven us so many times. Instead of just pushing people, you have to forgive. If not, you go to hell. That is only uh, pushing them with the law. But we push them, uh, we motivate, not push. Motivate them with God's grace, with what God has done for us. And then why can't some people forgive? Because they hold grudges. They remember. They just remember the bad things other people do. And they are affected by other Christians who don't forgive. Uh, and then reminder and warning, when we don't forgive other people's sins, the Father will also not forgive us and then we can end up in hell. And then how? Okay, first we think about how many times God has, we have sinned against God and God still forgives us and gives us the peace of forgiveness and the joy of salvation. So we thank God for that. And we say, you know, Lord, I have not forgiven people so many times and you still work in my life. So I appreciate you. Please change my heart. So we come close to God. We worship God so that God will give us that motivation to forgive other people. And also we learn to have compassion on people uh, because people who cannot forgive other people, they have been hurt by people all the lifetime. So they only have hatred. So they only hate people. And then so when we can understand their weakness and then we say, Lord, I want to have compassion on the person. I want to pray for the person. I want to start to say good things to the person. I want to start to give gifts to the person and, and forgive the person. So we, each step we improve. <clears throat> God is very happy. When we start to forgive people, uh, God is very happy. When, when we start to do nice things to people, <clears throat> God is very happy. <clears throat> when we start to pray for people, 
God is very happy. And then when and then we remind ourselves, when I can forgive someone, I can encourage myself and say, I have improved and God is happy with me. Now this is not being proud. It's just, just holding on to God's promises that when we obey Him, He will be very happy. So I hope that you can learn to uh, write sermons with this outline. So the, all the way, it's all on one direction. Help me.